We're crashing out to getting some breaking news that's coming in this minute. The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, has tested positive for coronavirus. That's the latest piece of information that's just trickling in. This coming at a time when the UK is grappling with an increasing number of uh, coronavirus cases and deaths. In the latest, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has also tested positive. Now, we are awaiting further details on uh, whether he is uh, now admitted in a hospital at a medical facility or whether he's undergoing self-isolation at home. But what we do know as of now is that his test reports have come back and he has tested positive. Remember, there's been a, a lot of uh, speculation over uh, Boris Johnson himself undergoing testing for coronavirus. Uh, also, his statements in this regard have been dissected by the media time and again uh, over whether or not he will actually be tested for COVID-19. Uh, we're also getting in a clearer picture uh, of uh, the state or the situation on the ground in the UK when it comes to the coronavirus crisis. Of course, the country has been grappling with an increasing number of cases and deaths. Uh, Boris Johnson has tested positive is what we know as of now. Uh, he is, of course, uh, uh, he, we are waiting for the details on whether he will be uh, at a medical facility or whether he will be undergoing self-isolation at home. What we can also tell you at this point uh, is that a, a lot of uh, scrutiny that the UK healthcare system itself has come under, uh, given uh, the kind of... Uh, uh, measures that have already been taken, whether or not they should have been taken earlier, has been something that's also been discussed and talked about, whether the measures that have been taken by the UK already uh, have been uh, sufficient. But at the same time, as the UK deals with the rising number of cases and uh, uh, deaths and uh, grapples with the intensifying coronavirus crisis, the latest that's coming in from the UK is that the Prime Minister Boris Johnson has tested positive for COVID-19. Let's uh, play out this uh, reaction that's coming in for us. Hi folks, I want to bring you up to speed with something that's happening today, which is that I've developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus. That's to say a temperature and a, a persistent cough. And on the advice of the chief medical officer, I've taken a test that has come out positive. So I am working from home. I'm self-isolating and that's entirely the right thing to do. Uh, but be in no doubt that I can continue, uh, thanks to the wizardry of modern technology, to communicate with all my top team to lead the national fight back against coronavirus. And I want to thank everybody who's involved. I want to thank, but of course, above all, our amazing NHS staff. It, it was very moving last night to join in that national clap uh, for the NHS. But it's not just the NHS, it's our police, uh, uh, social care workers, uh, teachers, everybody who works in schools, the DWP staff, uh, an amazing national effort by the public services, but also by every member of the British public who's volunteering, incredible response, 600,000 people have volunteered to take part in a great national effort to protect people from the consequences of coronavirus. I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody who's working to keep our country going through this epidemic. And we will get through it. And the way we're going to get through it is, of course, by applying the measures that you'll have heard so much about. And the more effectively we all comply with those measures, the faster our country will come through this epidemic and the faster we'll will bounce back. So thank you to everybody who's doing what I'm doing, working from home to stop the spread of the virus from household to household. That's the way we're going to win. We're going to beat it and we're going to beat it together. Stay at home and save lives. All right, that's the video message that Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, has put out declaring that he has tested positive for COVID-19 after he uh, was experiencing symptoms. Uh, he was advised to undergo a test and uh, the test results have come back and he has tested positive for coronavirus. Also at the same time, uh, advising everyone in the UK to stay back home. Let's get in further details now from our London Bureau Chief, Mandy Clark, who's joining us on the broadcast. Uh, Mandy, what more do we know as of now? 
not too much more, but we do know he is uh, showing mild symptoms and he is um, isolating from home. But I think that one of the big questions, of course, he lives with his girlfriend, Carrie, who is currently pregnant. And so there'll be uh, lots of questions on uh, whether she too does have coronavirus, uh, that put her more at risk. Uh, but it is a very surprise announcement that Boris Johnson has confirmed that he does have coronavirus, but currently exhibiting mild symptoms. Right, and that's what, something that he stated in his video message as well. Uh, Mandy, like you're telling us, uh, he, his girlfriend also is yet to undergo a test. Is that right? As far as we know, we haven't got any information on whether she has or not, but that is, would be the next big question. If she has it, he, she does live with him, and she is pregnant, in all likelihood there is a high chance. So uh, we don't know whether she has been tested or not, but that would be the next concern because she does fall into that higher risk group of being pregnant. Right, and before this news came in, Mandy, was uh, the Prime Minister uh, indulging in engagements as usual or was he working from home? When the uh, new measures came in, which was only really uh, just at the start of this week when they start to really clamp down on those measures, he started to um, self-isolate, uh, but we didn't, you know, of course, he would have uh, been infectious before that time, and that's why the need um, and a lot of criticism has been around the government of adding these isolation measures in a bit too late. Uh, so, we know, he was going to Parliament before that time. He was up until um, the close of Parliament. He was there, so there is every chance that it could have spread more. They were too practicing distancing, but not self-isolation. He is now. Right, and apart message, do we know more about the kind of symptoms that he was experiencing, Mandy? Uh, those symptoms he was showing, and only that it was mild symptoms. And of course, it's important for everyone to remember when it comes to the coronavirus, around the third people won't show symptoms at all. So yes. not all symptoms are the same. But what we do know is that he was showing some symptoms enough to, to cause for concern, have that test done, and it is found that he, the, the Prime Minister does, in fact, have coronavirus. Uh, the, he, he was in contact with many of the, uh, the leaders, uh, what they're describing as a war cabinet fighting the coronavirus. So... That's also a question that the people who have been in contact with the most, they might need to be tested too because it is part of that chain. Right, so just some more clarity on that front, Mandy. Uh, you're saying that uh, for the last few days, so do we know more about the last... Practicing a level of social distancing, the complete self-isolation isn't the case. Every evening he uh, has been coming on it, addressing the nation along with the chief medical officer. So they would practice social distancing, but of course it wasn't isolation. So the question is, did they practice social distancing enough? Did it work? Is there a danger that perhaps the chief medical officer could be infected? We do know uh, he has been addressing the nation. Now, interestingly, those addresses, the, the journalists are logging in um, from afar, so th the journalists themselves aren't there physically in the room, but certainly he is with his uh, war cabinet when it comes to fighting the coronavirus. So they also might be at risk. Listen in once again to that video message that was put out just a short while back by the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Hi folks, I want to bring you up to speed with something that's happening today, which is that I've developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus, that's to say a temperature and a, a persistent cough. And on the advice of the chief medical officer, I've taken a test that has come out positive. So I am working from home, I'm self-isolating, and that's entirely the right thing to do. Uh, but be in no doubt that I can continue, uh, thanks to the wizardry of modern technology, to communicate with all my top team to lead the national fight back against coronavirus. And I want to thank everybody who's involved. I want to thank, but of course, above all, our amazing NHS staff. It, it was very moving last night to join in that. 
NHS. But it's not just the NHS, it's our police, our, our social care workers, uh, teachers, everybody who works in schools, the DWP staff, uh, an amazing national effort by the public services, but also by every member of the British public who's volunteering, incredible response. 600,000 people have volunteered to take part in a great national effort to protect people from the consequences of coronavirus. I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody who's working to keep our country going through this epidemic. And we will get through it. And the way we're going to get through it is, of course, by applying the measures that you'll have heard so much about. And the more effectively we all comply with those measures, the faster our country will come through this epidemic and the back. So thank you to everybody who's doing what I'm doing, working from home to stop the spread of the virus from household to household. That's the way we're going to win. We're going to beat it and we're going to beat it together. Stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. That is the appeal uh, that's coming in from the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson in that video message. Uh, he has announced that he has tested positive for COVID-19 and at the same time is once again stressing on the need for everyone to practice social distancing and self-isolation. Let's uh, also get in Andrew Whitehead, senior journalist, joining us live from London. We also have a London Bureau Chief, Mandy Clark, who's been getting us the very latest. Andrew, to you first. Uh, at a time like this, when the UK Prime Minister himself tests positive, there is an urgent need at the same time uh, to reassure the people on the ground that there's no need to panic. Uh, and that's an ending, with, uh, the, uh, ending that message with uh, a re-emphasizing on the need for self-isolation and social distancing. Yeah, but we've now got the head of government and we've got the heir to the British throne, both of them confirmed with coronavirus. So that, of course, is concerning. But your uh, is intended to demonstrate that Boris Johnson is still, um, uh, although he's got symptoms, is still able to operate as the head of government and that there's no crisis at the top of government. But nevertheless, there'll be concern about whether if his symptoms become more severe. And uh, uh, although he's been practicing distancing, social distancing from colleagues, we now must be uh, worried about whether other members of the government may also in time develop the virus. Right, and uh, the way the crisis has been handled so far by the UK, Andrew, a lot of questions have been raised targeting the administration's way of uh, dragging its feet when it comes to imposing restrictions uh, or travel bans, uh, and at the same time, a question mark over the way the NHS has handled the situation. Your comments on that? Well, there's certainly an issue about whether the lockdown here should have been introduced uh, a few days or even perhaps a week earlier. The lockdown is nothing like as complete as that that you're experiencing in India. So there are also questions about whether the lockdown should be more thorough, whether uh, all work on construction sites should be stopped immediately. Uh, and there's a great, been a, a, a groundswell of support for care workers and health workers in the National Health Service. But some of the doctors and nurses say they're not getting the protective gear that they require. And there is now a political that the government should be doing more to make sure that medical workers, care workers have the protective gear, which protects them, who are so vital at the moment, from, uh, from the virus when they're working with those who may well have been exposed to the virus. Right, and it might be too early to ask you this, but uh, is there an arrangement that we are aware of at this point over who takes charge uh, if the Prime Minister is continuing to be in self-isolation? He, of course, has been carrying out most of those engagements uh, from home the last few days, is what we understand. But do we know of uh, uh, the next person who takes charge? Uh, y yes, we do. I mean, it needs to be said that Boris Johnson himself says he's well enough to remain as head of government, of but course. it was announced a few days ago that in the event that he wasn't able to, for whatever reason, then the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, would lead the government and would take on the, the uh, 
Prime Minister in the interim. That hasn't happened at the moment, but I suppose it's reassuring that there is a system in place in case Boris Johnson should become indisposed over the next few days. Right, and do we know more about uh, for how many days he has been in self-isolation and what was the last official engagement that he actually participated in? Uh, no, we don't. It was conspicuous that he didn't attend the routine government news conference uh, yesterday evening. That was led by Rishi Sunak, who was the Chancellor of the Exchequer, the Finance Minister, who uh, in political terms is doing extremely well in terms of the authority and composure he's showing uh, and the measures he's introducing. But we don't know very much about uh, Boris Johnson's uh, schedule of late. What we do know, though, is when he has been hosting cabinet meetings, they have been video conference meetings. They've been using either Zoom or similar technology with cabinet colleagues regularly uh, in person. Right. Uh, stay with me, Andrew. Um, let's also get in a quick reaction from our London Bureau Chief, Mandy Clark, who's been getting us more on that as well. Mandy, as I was asking you earlier as well, the last engagement that uh, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson engaged in, and to what extent are his colleagues also um, indulging in self-isolation at this point? Oh, we don't know about the colleagues. Last time the, the public saw him was 8 o'clock last night. Uh, when he stepped out of the front door of uh, Number 10 Downing Street, along with Richie, uh, the finance minister, Rishi Sunak, uh, clapping for the NHS nation, decided to, to at, the, at eight, 8 o'clock to applaud the uh, National Health Service. So that's the last time we really saw him. Now, he has been practicing social distancing, but in all likelihood, you could expect that the, the people that he has been might be at risk. So that would be the, the next question. That, that is the last time we had seen him essentially out and about. And um, as the, 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 uh, our colleague just pointed out, he wasn't at that previous uh, press briefing uh, earlier that day, but he had done it the day before. So we do know he has been uh, in contact with the chief medical officer and Richie Sunak, but practicing social distancing. So there is a question around whether those high-level um, leaders also should be looked at getting tested as well. Right, and a quick check also, Mandy, on the latest uh, numbers that are coming in from the UK, uh, a spike in the number of cases over the last uh, 48 hours. There has been absolutely an increasing uh, numbers of deaths. On average, over the, the past few days, it was around 50 a day. Uh, had to, yesterday, the numbers had jumped to 100, so uh, just in one day. So we are seeing an increasing number of deaths from the coronavirus and a number of cases um, all over suffering. Britain is still... Um, considered uh, behind Italy. We haven't seen Italian numbers, but we are definitely seeing a spike. There is uh, a, a cluster also seen in Birmingham today. Uh, London was seen as uh, one of the top centers for the infection. We're also seeing separately in the Midlands a hot spot there as well. Right. Stay with me, Ma Mandy. Andrew, uh, given the numbers and the way they have been on the rise over the last uh, uh, 48 hours, uh, what more uh, can we say about the measures that will be uh, imposed across the UK? And what about the enforcement of the measures that are, that are already in place? Are well, the lockdown, uh, certainly in London, which is the area most affected at the moment by the virus, has yes. been fairly well observed. But the police do have powers both to find people who are breaching the lockdown and basically to order them home. And in, certainly in some areas of the country, the police have been stopping people on the streets. They've been stopping cars, making people have a making sure that people have to shops. Uh, people are allowed to go to pharmacies, people allowed to go on missions for a good and appropriate reason to be out and about. Uh, and it's a rather different lockdown from that in India. So uh, on behalf of those people with limited mobility or who are elderly and advised not to leave the home at all. So uh, people here are allowed to take one form of exercise, walking or jogging. So it's not a complete lockdown. And the police are now enforcing it with more vigor or on a bike. 
uh, each day as a matter of, of course. People are allowed to go. And what about uh, the need for assistance from uh, uh, outside? Uh, do we know uh, more about the kind, the extent to which the authorities have reached out uh, to uh, other uh, countries for help? Uh, we don't know very much about that. Um, the one thing that we do know is that the European Union has a common scheme to get more ventilators, which are urgently required for those who've got acute symptoms of the virus and need treatment in hospital. And Britain is not part of that buying scheme. It had the option to be so, but it, it, it seems to have chosen or to not to be so or failed to become part of it. And of course, Britain is now not formally part of the European Union, but that does seem to be, in some people's eyes, a rather reckless move. We may not be part of the European Union, but we can still make common cause with European member states in our common interests.